Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be fixing the rotting wood on this structure. So we're in our mobile home. We're currently renovating and this is the kitchen door in the back of the house. And as you can see we got all kinds of rot in the sill here. And the rim board and, and the subfloor, everything is rotted out because the door was leaking. So we're going to be removing this whole frame, fixing the floor, and hopefully getting it all back together today. I'm also going to try to get the windows reframed. We want to fix a rotted window and make another one bigger. So that's the goal today, framing. So here's where we're at. You can see it's just an open structure. We're hoping to get the sheathing on very soon. If we can get all that rot taken care of, we can start sheathing the house. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but this is a load bearing wall. So I don't want to take out too much support, but I am going to take out this frame. It'll be okay for this short span. It's not carrying too much weight right now. So now that these are cut and I can see they're not carrying a lot of weight, I can just uh, pop them out. Okay, no weight on that. Let's try this one. You can see. No weight on that, no weight on that. So I'm safe to take those out for now and we'll work on cutting that floor out. Look at this rod. Kind of make it somewhat straight. Good enough. So I'm going to be cutting out this rim joist, just replacing it from here to just past that. I don't know. There it is. Right there. Snip these wires off. Pleasure. That means there's the wires going right there. Like right behind that board. Yeah. We're trying to be really careful here because we have a, a lot of electrical wires coming in behind this box, behind this spot. And we don't want to mess those up. All right, now it's just about getting it off. Come on, Wood. Work with me here.
There we go. This sill board is actually more rotted than we expected. So we're gonna be cutting some of this out too. Gonna to cut it back to here probably. And over here somewhere. We'll figure it out. It's pretty soft. And we'd like not to leave any rot if we can help it. Good, look at solid wood, solid wood. A little bit of rot, but not too bad. That's good enough. Yep. Just test fitting. This should be okay. So I picked up some sill seal, so I'll be putting that under this piece at least. But as you can see, their wood is touching the concrete and there's no seal and it's still solid, so. And that's not pressure treated either. Nope. I can fix it once I get this in, I'll tap it down. This side's loose. I went ahead and got these boards screwed in to the new sill and the old sill. You can see it better here. And that joins these two together so they don't move. I also took some of these five inch screws and I put them right up under here, straight through that into these floor joists to help hold this to those. So this is totally solid and secure, except for this. I need to put that new piece right here. Okay, I'm done with this. It looks good, I'm happy with it. There's a slight bit of rot extending into these corners, but they're not that bad. I did chip out this part. This is all gonna be covered with new wood, so it'll be totally fine. This is what I was really concerned with. Now we can work on this window, which you can see here's the rot, water damage and ant damage. So we definitely gotta fix this. Let me take some measurements, cut some wood, and we'll get right to that. Oh, so clean. I think I got all my wood cut to length. So now the fun part, mini demo. I'm gonna pull all this out. Should be pretty quick. All right guys, I got the new framing in for the window and it's looking awesome. So this came out pretty good. I was really slow in building this because I ran into some kind of weird measurement issue where it just wasn't making sense to me, but we got it. 
So now we're going to do this one. We're going to be framing the same size window, making it bigger right there. So now I'm just building up my header to make it three and a half inches thick for the wall. And should be. Let me just get my layout, make sure it looks good. Nice. Yeah. I'll just pull a few staples and hopefully the next, the new wall just fits in here nicely. Those are long. I could just nail them over, but we'll try to pull them out. Round two, Ash. <laughs> now we're getting the paper up. Yeah. Now this might look like a load-bearing wall because it's on the exterior of the house. Generally your exterior walls are load-bearing. Uh, on our house, this interior wall is load-bearing because you can see it carries the weight of the roof. So the, the truss is sitting on this end and it's the other end sitting on, on that wall. That's all, all the weight of the roof. So all these center walls, like in the house, they don't carry any actual weight. Uh, not these center, these. Just these two outside. This carries minor weight, but that's more or less um, being carried by these two outside walls because it's kind of like a truss. So we were able to do this really easy without, without bracing up the wall. You can see it didn't move. I'm gonna step back. Cool. Wow, much better. That's gonna be much better in here. All right guys, just when I thought I was done, I almost forgot I need a door. So we're gonna be framing up this doorway pretty quickly. I have all my pieces cut. And here it is, really basic door frame. So all I gotta do is nail together my header, nail together my sides and put it in. We're using the existing top plate. So I got Maverick out here watching, eating an apple and I should have this up in a couple minutes. Done. So there's our new doorway framed up. <laughs> I put some really long screws up through the header into the top plate to secure it. I think we're actually done framing up everything. It's looking really good. The door, the only advice I can give is if you're framing up any door, what I always do is I go two inches over the door size. So we want a standard 32 inch by 80 inch door in the back. So I frame my opening 34 by 82. So if you want a 36, it'd be a 38 inch opening. It's always two inches over. It's okay to give yourself a little extra height if you wanna go 82 and three quarters. Sometimes that helps if you have built up flooring in the house. What I always do, and I never see people do, is leave my bottom plate in place. People frame up their walls and they always cut these out. Standard practice, cut out the bottom plate, install the door. For me, that puts the door way too low to the floor and you end up hitting all your doormats and it gets really frustrating. 
I always lift my top plate for the door to rest on and it lifts it off the floor. You have plenty of clearance so you can put whatever kind of doormat you want and not hit it. And especially since we're gonna be adding some plywood to this floor, we're only gonna have about half the width of that two by four sticking up. It'll be enough to do the job, but that's the only advice, advice I can give because I've seen so many doors that are skimming the floor and it's annoying. So there it is, another job done. I'm happy with all the progress. I'm happy with how it came out. I love the big window on the end of the house. Yeah. We tried making it symmetrical to the one in the living room, so that's how we decided where to put it. I think it's pretty close, so that from the outside of the house, it'll be pretty even. That window on the, on the back stays the same. And the door, it moved over a little bit, but not much, only a couple inches. Um, all the rot is gone. That's really good. A lot of people have been asking us about the ants. We had carpenter ants in the wall. You saw that. Um, carpenter ants don't eat the wood. And this is some interesting stuff that even uh, one of the, our subscribers posted in the comments. And I thought that was kind of cool. So carpenter ants don't eat the wood. They tunnel through the wood to make a nest. They're not like termites that'll just keep eating your house. So they only want to tunnel in rotted wood, wet wood, damp wood, stuff like that. The, that's why all the good wood was not touched. The ants only went into the wet, soggy, old, dead wood. So now that we got rid of all the rotted wood, the ants have no place to live and they're not interested. They left. Yep. So we're gonna wrap it up here and next time we'll be wrapping up the house, hopefully, <laughs> because we're gonna be doing the sheathing and house wrap. So hopefully that all goes smooth, but until next time, take care. Bye.